Rebuilding a Vintage Open Steam Launch. This is part 11, and it's about refitting the steam fittings to the boiler. And I've just got back from Blackgate's Engineering, where I've been doing some Christmas shopping. I bought myself some more Loctite 542, and I bought the materials to make a new steam chest for the steam engine. I will either machine this steam chest casting to the shape of the Stuart one, or alternatively, I could use the piece of brass bar that I bought that everything is sat on. But the main reason I went to Black Gates was to buy the 542 because I need it for this job. I'm fitting the steam fittings to the steam boiler. This is the little whistle valve that's at the front of the boiler. A quick word about fitting fittings to boilers. It's not as easy as it looks because, generally speaking, they have to be in a set position. For instance, this whistle valve has to have the threaded part uppermost. And what you must never, 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 ever do is over tighten a fitting if it won't quite make the position you want it to be in. The best way to do it, I find, is to use shim washers, which are washers of different thicknesses that you can combine to get the right gap between the part and the boiler bush. If you do over tighten fittings as you fit them to the boiler, you're more than likely going to snap the thread. That will mean that you have a boiler bush with a piece of thread in it that needs to be got out, and you need to buy a new fitting. And the other thing, which is probably worse, you could strip the threads in the boiler bush. This fitting had a fibre washer fitted. I don't personally like fibre washers, but it's down to the individual choice. Using fibre washers can be a good idea, I suppose, because you can just tighten the fitting down on the washer, and the fitting will compress the washer. Whereas with the copper washers that I use, they're not going to compress any time soon. There is another type of washer used with steam fittings, and this is called a crushable washer, but I'm not too thrilled with those either. You just tighten the fitting until it's in the right position, and the washer crushes to accommodate this. So my final word on this is I use shim washers and Loctite 542, and my fittings never seem to leak. And this goes back years, I've always done it this way. This part that I'm currently working with is the lower water gauge fitting. I've already mentioned in a previous episode about the importance of making sure that these two components are in line with each other. You notice there that I got a quick shot of my backhoe spanner in the video. This was not a clip of a spanner just for the sake of it. I was showing how useful they are for precisely setting the position of water gauge fittings, or the accurate positioning of any boiler fitting for that matter. It's quite difficult to show this sometimes because I'm actually doing the job and my hand is always in the way. What I'm actually doing is just checking the alignment of the glass tube between the top fitting and the bottom fitting. I'm not just throwing the glass into the fitting, I'm catching it with my other hand. And then I move the glass left and right and forward and backwards until the movement of the glass is exactly the same all the way around. I'll try and show it in this clip. It goes without saying that the glass is not a tight fit in the brass fittings. There is some side play. I'm looking for equal side play and equal front to back play. And by making fine adjustments to the position of the fittings, and here I'm removing the bottom fitting, and tried a different shim washer. I was so confident that this was going to be the shim washer to end all shim washers, that I coated the thread in some Loctite 542 and assembled the water gauge. So with the bottom fitting in its finished place, I removed the top fitting and applied some Loctite 542 to that. A quick caution about Loctite 542, apart from possibly not drinking it, it removes paint very well. So if you're using painted fittings, particularly the commercial black painted fittings, the paint will be removed very easily with this 542. So be very careful when using it, and don't forget you also have it on your fingers. This is the final fitting of the water gauge, and as you can see, the glass is offset to the right. So I'm moving the bottom fitting to the right, and having a try, and I think what I need to do is move the top fitting to the left, maybe. It's very much trial and error. This is not recommended, rotating the fitting whilst the glass is in there, because if you do it too much, you will smash the glass. Then you have to start again with a new glass. I've been doing this job for a long time. I don't mean fitting a water gauge to this boiler. This has taken long enough. What I mean to say is that I've been doing these kind of jobs for such a long time that I now have a pretty good idea of what to do. I'd just like to mention that one of the viewers put a comment on the last video and he says he has plenty of hardwood 
and if anybody wants some, if they get in touch with him, he'll try and arrange it. And as you can see by the clip, I am still messing about with this water gauge. Once it's fitted, it's going to stay fitted. And now it's looking quite equidistant, side to side and front to back. So now it's time to put the nuts on. And here is another caution. I'm using a spanner to fit the nuts. This is not a good idea. You should really put them in finger tight. A lot of the time, if you over tighten a nut like this, you will shatter the glass. I'm doing this once again with experience, but the gauge glass nuts really need to be just past finger tight. Not like this part, this is the top cap, this needs to be put in properly. And once that's in, I can now move to fitting the steam tap. This is the steam tap that I modified, and it fits at a nice right angle. It's not mega tight, but by the time the Loctite 542 goes off, it's not going to leak. This clip is showing the fitting of the piece of insulated pipe between the steam tap and the superheater input. And I do know that this is not really a superheater, so while I'm fitting the water gauge, which is self-explanatory, I'll talk about superheaters. On a steam boiler, generally speaking, the superheater tubes go through a large fire tube, oddly enough called a superheater flue, and some of them even protrude into the fire. Now these are very good superheaters and the steam is extremely hot. And once again, proper superheat is only suitable for cast iron cylinders. You'd do a lot of damage to a gunmetal cylinder if you hit it with severe superheat. So as I work with these small model boilers frequently, I am actually aware that they are not superheaters but steam dryers, but to avoid confusion, I will continue to call them superheaters. Time now to see if the pressure gauge works, and yes it works well, and it tallies with the gauge on the compressor. I'll just try the steam tap. Yes, that appears to work and doesn't leak. And to finish off this episode on fitting the boiler fittings, I need to make a special nut, and I've just made one. It's 3 8 by 26 threads per inch, because that's the thread on the bottom of the clack valve. And it seems to fit okay, it screws in place, so that's another little job done. I'll just take this opportunity to show off my new Barco spanner, sent to me by Harald from Sweden, and once again thank you very much, it's really nice. And as you can clearly see in this clip, contrary to what I've been told by some experts out there, this should be rounding the edge of this nut, because adjustable spanners are no good at all, but mine doesn't seem to, it seems to just tighten the nut. There is a bit of a problem though, the fire hole door lever, is actually going to foul the pipe, or at least it was before I bent it out of the way. Now it's fine. And the last nut to tighten up is the 5 16 by 32 threads per inch nut on the outlet of the steam dryer or superheater. So that's about it for the boiler. The woodwork's not perfect and the copper work's not perfect, but overall it has a certain charm. It looks to me like it's come straight out of the Industrial Revolution. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.